For this example, we're going to look at the graph that's given and we're going to determine the intervals on which the graph or the function is continuous. And at every place where it's not continuous, we're going to talk about the type of the discontinuity and whether it's left or right uh, continuous. That's the one-sided continuity. Um, to be able to justify the type and one-sided continuity, we're going to need some uh, limit statements, but we'll take those as they come. So looking at the overall picture, I almost think that it's easiest to figure out where is it discontinuous first, and then we can go back and look at the intervals of continuity. So um, I see two different discontinuities. The first discontinuity I see is at uh, x equals negative 1, and the second one that I see is at x equals positive 1. Um, and that is just the two places I had to pick up my pencil, for lack of a better word. If we start at the far left, we can um, draw continuously until we reach that hole, that open circle there, at negative 1, 2. Um, but then we can pick right back up until we reach the vertical asymptote there. We had a solid dot on the vertical asymptote, but then we'd have to pick up our pencil to be able to relocate down there for the next arrowhead at negative of one, or sorry, at positive one, negative infinity, uh, to continue on our graph. And so the only two places where we're really having to consider what's happening are the two discontinuities at negative one and one. So looking at the intervals of continuity, uh, we notice that uh, the domain there starts at negative infinity on the x-axis, and we realize that the first place where we're considering is negative one, x equals negative one. Well, at x equals negative 1, I see both my left and my right limits matching to create that hole where it's attached to both the left and the right-hand side, but that solid dot, that function value, is somewhere else entirely. The function value, the solid dot, is isolated. It's not attached to the left or the right there, and so um, we cannot have that as included in either one of these intervals. It's not left continuous, it's not right continuous, and so this right-hand endpoint of our first interval, since we don't have left continuity, we don't include it, and for the second interval, uh, where we're starting back up at negative one, we are not right continuous at that left endpoint, so we cannot include it. Now, as we continue on, the next place that we noticed um, something interesting happening would be at x equals 1. Well, at x equals 1, we do have the solid dot attached to the left-hand side, and so we do include that uh, 1 in the interval there where it's the right-hand endpoint left continuous up until that right-hand endpoint, and so we include it there. And then, uh, as we continue on here, starting back at 1, that last interval that we would have would not include uh, the 1 because at 1, we're not left, we're not right continuous, so that left-hand endpoint cannot be included, and we'd move on to positive infinity. So we've got our three intervals of continuity. Notice I put commas in between instead of unions because I really don't want to combine these independent intervals in any way. Um, I'm just looking at those being three intervals on which this function is continuous. So for the discontinuities, we kind of talked about what they were along the way. We see that at x equals negative 1, we saw that hole where that hole was attached to both the right hand and the left hand side there. The function value is elsewhere. The function value is not attached anywhere. And so at x equals negative 1, we have a removable discontinuity. That's the type of discontinuity, and we have um, neither left nor right continuous. And that's the one-sided continuity that we're addressing. So the limit statements that we would get would be, um, here's what I would do. I would say that the limit as x approaches a negative 1 from the negative side of the function is uh, going to be equal to uh, the value 2 that we saw. Um, that's also what's going to be happening for uh, as x approaches negative 1 from the right-hand side. That's going to be equal to that value of 2. Those two match, and that's what's telling us that we have a, the removable. 
Um, notice that uh, the function value f of negative 1 is equal to um, that solid dot there is at negative 1 comma negative 1. Uh, the fact that this does not match with, um, with either of the two one-sided limits um, tells us that it's neither left nor right continuous. So if we look back here, what we notice is it's not equal to either one of those one-sided limits, and that's telling us about the one-sided continuity, that, there's, that it's neither left nor right continuous. So looking at um, x is equal to 1, we see a vertical asymptote. That's the first thing we notice there is that we're going to have an infinite discontinuity. Uh, the fact that we have an infinite discontinuity or is coming from the observation that at least one of the one-sided limits was infinite. And so to really justify the infinite discontinuity, we could say that the limit as x approaches 1 from the right-hand side of the function was negative infinity. That's justifying our infinite discontinuity. Now, as we're looking at um, the one-sided continuity, we first look for the solid dot, and we notice that that solid dot is... Um, so f of 1 is up there at that level 2. Well, that's the function value, but more than just the function value, we have to show that that's attached to something, and that attachment is our limit value. Limit as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side of f of x is also equal to 2. These two are equal. That's what's telling us that we have left, um, uh, left continuity. The fact that the left-hand limit matches the function value. And we can just see that on our picture by locating the dot and noticing that that dot is attached to the left-hand side. And so we've got that um, pictorially as well.